Dr. Sats Cooper is a respected clinical psychologist, but is perhaps more famous as a fearless political activist whose opposition to the apartheid regime led to his imprisonment on Robben Island. He's the kind of person who makes a profound impression, and his example inspired his daughter, Aneda, to attempt the hazardous swim from the island to the mainland. Aneda is a pretty remarkable person in her own right, and Zaki went off to find out why she's making waves. Aneda Cooper is equally at home in the ocean and the pool, but her passion lies in drown-proofing young South Africans. And like her father, she believes in being actively involved. To many of us, our fathers are no doubt real-life superheroes. Today, I'm meeting Onida Cooper, the daughter of anti-apartheid activist Sass Cooper. Onida swam from Robben Island to Cape Town as a tribute to her hero, her father. Sathas Ivan Cooper, better known as Sats, matriculated from Sastry College in 1967. And within a year, he was already heavily engaged in student activism. Elected Secretary of the Black People's Convention in 1972, he was banned the following year. But this didn't prevent him from taking part in the Durban Strike of 1971. Convicted in terms of the Terrorism Act, he spent part of his sentence on Robben Island and after his release was elected Vice President of Azapo. Anita, it's so lovely to meet nice you. Nice to meet you too. <laughs> Where does your story begin, Anita? So I learned how to swim when I was two. Thankfully, my mother was a swimmer herself, so she made sure all her kids were water safe. I was one of the youngest swimmers to swim Midmar at five. Kind of went on from there, was swimming morning training when I was nine years old, waking up at the crack of dawn to swim before school, and then represented South Africa for the first time when I was 12 and then went on to a number of international competitions and then really just went on to receive a full scholarship to study in the States. How does a water baby end up studying psychology and women's studies? I think my career path was influenced by my father. My father is a clinical psychologist by profession and really just from a young age embedded in myself and my siblings was giving back and so I knew that I wanted to help people and the only way that I knew how was through psychology. What are some of the invaluable lessons you've learned from your father? I think I've learned to be courageous, I've learned an inner strength that I don't think I can even describe. That fire and that flame it just keeps on going and I just find all these different avenues to ignite it and spark something wherever I go. What inspired the Robin Island crossing? One morning, I had one of my master swimmers, Ruan, suggest we do something crazy. And a few of my master swimmers have done the Robin Island crossing. And then I went back and I spoke to my brother and I said to him, there's never been a direct descendant of anyone on the island to ever do it, why don't we do it? I started a non-profit. This is a perfect way for us to raise funds for the non-profit. And you know, we couldn't stop it, the date was set. What kind of training does a swim like this entail? My training just involved a lot of cross training, running, boxing, and then quite a bit of swimming. Initially, I kind of picked up my mileage, would do an average of like two to three kilometers a session, maybe three sessions a week, but I balanced it out with a lot of runs. So physically, I was in okay shape towards the end. As the gulf flies, it's about seven and a half kilometers from the island to the west coast, but Onida and her fellow swimmers had to battle currents, winds and three meter swells, as well as the chilly temperatures of the South Atlantic. Eventually, the ordeal was over, and the team raised 70,000 rand for Anita's swimming school NPO called Making Waves Together South Africa. Now that you've completed the swim, congratulations. What have you learned about yourself? I think anyone can say, I can do anything. And it's only really when we hit rock bottom are we challenged. There were about four times during the swim that I wanted to give up. But more so than physical pain that I was going through, my arms being tired, the waves knocking me, swallowing so much seawater, I knew that mentally I had an upper hand. And only then did it kind of set in that if you come together and you believe in something enough, you can do it. Anita, for you, what was the significance of this swim? I needed to inspire the majority of South Africa that might not have this opportunity. I mean, a lot of our public schools don't have swimming pools, don't have the qualified teachers to teach, don't have swimming pools that are empty. And so for me, this swim was really to raise funds for my nonprofit. But also, my dad was on Robben Island for five years and their future and their lives were not guaranteed. This kind of uncertainty and the upheavals that we'll go through on the swim were kind of like the uncertainty that they faced. But now, our end is guaranteed. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. There is an end to this. And so, 
This swim signified that freedom that they guaranteed us. What does the NPO aim to achieve? We want more people to be water safe. We want to grow the amount of swimmers we have. We want these kids to have the opportunity to do and dream as big as they want. What advice do you have for anyone wanting to give back to their community? We all have it in us to give back. It's really about paying it forward. If you go out and you smile and you treat the next person with respect, you're making a difference in their lives. Anita, what advice do you have for anyone young or old wanting to learn how to swim? You're never too old to learn how to swim. The younger you are, the better it is for you to develop your strokes, but you're never too old. Once you get over that fear, it's smooth sailing from there. Anita, you are too wonderful. I have loved every minute of chatting to you. Thank you so much for having me, but please excuse me, I do have another lesson to teach. <laughs> Ciao. Drowning is the second most common cause of accidental death in South Africa, and over 70% of the victims are children. Anita's efforts aren't a luxury, but a lifesaver. Onida has chosen to spend her life uplifting and empowering people. Her work will change many lives and for that I'm sure she will be unforgettable to those she has touched.